What's going on everybody? My name is Tomas and this is my first attempt at a CES video. I wanted to keep it short and simple since I'm not your breaking news source. I wanted to share with you guys what I thought was cool on the show floor. We spent most of the day in the North Hall of the Las Vegas Convention Center. As far as that goes, I ended up exploring the whole convention center, looking at things, well not even the whole convention center, but the whole North Hall, looking at things that were interesting to me. And then later on in the day, we made it to the Central Hall, which uh, where all the big boys are and where everything is that I was really excited about was, and we barely touched the surface on that. And the first thing that I saw there was an eye health booth, and they had all kinds of medical biometric measurement tools running through iOS devices, which I thought was really neat. And I think will have a big impact on like how the medical field runs. Again, I'm no health professional. I don't work in the health profession but I thought that was really neat. I didn't ask anybody any questions because again, it, was, it would be kind of like the blind, leading the blind type of thing. So uh, the next thing that I thought was interesting was the Octabooth and they did some fantastic stuff for mounting your uh, tablets in spaces that are not so mountable. So for couches and you know, locking iPads and tablets to tables for young kids and stuff. They have a spider clip uh, in addition to a monkey tail. And it's all modular design, so you know how I feel about modularity, and it's, it was pretty, pretty awesome. The next trend that I noticed, uh, well, not so much noticed, it was something that how the convention center, the North Hall was structured, is that there was plenty of vehicles and automotive type stuff, automotive audio and uh, Ford, Audi, Hyundai, and Chevy were all in that, that North Hall, so I got some footage of those cool things. Um, Audi was doing some interesting things with uh, driving assist, and um, there's, there was a vehicle there that I, I didn't ask anybody for, but and it didn't wasn't marked with anything, but their dash was uh, freaking awesome. It was like, it was all computerized, and uh, it would project your, your map. It was like a 3D type thing. Uh, I tried to capture as much as I could. It was a really packed area and everybody was really interested in looking at that vehicle. I happened to walk up on the Ford booth when they were talking about uh, the responsibility that the company had to uh, the ecosystem. So for example, they didn't really, they didn't necessarily want to put a vehicle in, in everybody, well make everybody an owner of a vehicle, but they wanted to make them accessible to families and things like that because if you think about it logistically, if, if 7 billion people each had a vehicle, it would be detrimental to the planet. And I, I was like, this is an interesting conversation. Um, I, I happened to walk in in the middle of it. That's unfortunate because I, I really wanted to hear what it was that they were talking about. Now let's get into some technology because that's what CES was all about. The first thing that I saw that was, it was, it was strange because the JVC booth had all this audio, but like on the side of it was attached these two really cool 4K cameras, the GYHM200 and the GYHM170 and these are 4K ultra wide camcorders that uh, the GYHM170 was priced at uh, $29.99 it's a fixed camcorder lens so no interchangeability there it shot 4K at 30p nothing nothing that we haven't seen but it was it was really cool um, they had the XLR inputs and all of that good stuff. And then there was a, an additional model there that was the GYLS 300, and it was a 4K camera that had a Super 35 sensor on it with a, a micro four thirds mount, which was a, a little weird. And I asked if they could uh, change the mounts out, you know, like the Red Epic, you can kind of put whatever mount it is in there that you need, and it'll adjust to whatever it is. Um, uh, whatever it is lens that you have well from what I saw there it looked like the mount was interchangeable so you could you know use L glass and the the display that they had running was well, not L glass but you know Canon and Nikon and stuff like that the display that they had up there had the the GYLS 300 with a, a Canon lens and then a Nikon lens so and it retails for 4400 uh, between 4400 and 5000 and that closed out my time in the North Hall and from there we went to the Central Hall where we immediately were greeted by the LG booth with all their super awesomeness of displays and curved displays and 4K displays and the G Flex 2. I plan on doing a separate video on the G Flex 2. We were fortunate enough to meet with a, a PR person that had the phone with them and they gave us some hands-on time with the 
the phone and that was fantastic. Sharp was doing some interesting things as well with displays. They had a freeform display which the display forms to the environment by the environment forming to the display. So what do I mean by that? Usually displays form the whatever module or whatever is being built around it. These displays form to the environment. I heard one of the Sharp employees or the display people talking to an industry contact saying why, why waste if we can make displays fit the environment. I thought that was an interesting aspect and in how much waste are they saving actually? You know, how much yield are they saving if they actually form the displays to the environment? It, it was really cool. They, they had some dashboard examples up there and stuff. And I know that that's, that's nothing new, but if you think about it, uh, vehicle manufacturers or designers are probably forming dashboards to the specifications of displays that they have. Sharp has taken that and reversed it. So now the car can be designed and the last thing can be is the display. And I thought that was really unique and awesome for the environment as, as waste occurs. The next thing that they had at their booth was a see-through display and this thing was wild. I don't even really know, I didn't talk to anybody about it, but I thought it was freaking cool. They had some bottles stacked up behind it and the display was running. It was black and white and then they had a color one, I believe. That thing was freaking cool. On that same wall, they had a mirror, which was acting as a display as well. And I thought that was just innovative. And then they had frameless TVs. They had like an angle at them, frameless 4K TVs. The the, the bezel around them was actually at an, an angle. Bezel actually blended into the frame and I thought that was really cool and innovative as well. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. Uh, if you liked it, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. Um, and then in addition to that, leave me a comment letting me know what it is that I can do to kind of guide me through CES 2015. This has been one heck of an experience. At the end of this, I think I'm gonna uh, do what I learned from CES as being, you know, the first, being a first timer here. Again, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. Y'all take care. The next thing that I ran into that I thought was unique was an Octobooth. And they make things, they make a spider clamp with a monkey tail and other things. And they won uh, 